But there's just a lot of things that has been happening. So I see you on the table you're watching. Hey, Mary, what is it? Like you feel weird now. I keep a touchy. Hi, man. I want to say that one. That's a thing, but I'm afraid. No. Like you want to say that one. Just give us a touchy. Let's put Jana Stover strong so. After we tell us to resign so, if you get TV. I'm like, no, no, she can't go home without an interview. Yeah, huh? yeah no, just like that. Even achieved as is. I know, you need to tell us. Like, no, your strength now. <laughs> like, I get a lot of Wow. Yo. Okay, polymonic are uh, such things make you feel very embarrassed and disappointed to be a man. Oh, yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, no, I, no, hey, that's true. Please do come and, and, and of course, um, please, if you don't mind. Then we've got the rat, who says like, so yeah, cruel like yeah. and evil. Yeah, not true. Very cruel and evil. Sure. Yeah. Wow. Sure. Okay, guys. The lady that we've been talking about, she's actually in the studio. And she's joining us right now because we were not ready for this, okay? So we didn't do any scripting. We didn't do anything. We're just calling it. After this song, we just we just we just want to hear from her. We are shocked as well in the studio. We are so shocked. Yo, we can't believe it. And your name is? Oh, Musa. Oh, Musa. Yeah, no. time right now it's uh, 21 27 we are just about to finish the show this is the last part of the show of course and uh, this is the love prescription show you are sitting with me the love doctor and of course the z last letter we are actually busy right now please guys go and go out there and buy this book the denial of a married woman we know of course a whole lot of um, you know we know a whole lot of women who've been den like who've been in denial that they are partners or they are you know husbands uh, somehow some way you know will, will will rape their own children I, and i know stories of the people that i've counseled before where a lady will say you know i was raped by my stepfather for so many years and he had always told me that if i ever say anything he will now rape my little sisters and therefore i had to be you know the sacrifice for many years until i was 20 something and right now it has messed me up that i don't know what i'm doing in my life anymore because uh, when it comes to relationships i'm just a mess this is what she says so i just i'm just saying that uh, right now i just need to talk uli musa she's in the house the lady that we've been talking about she's in the house the very lady that has been going through these kind of things, she's in the house. She's an activist. Musa Dumel. Hello, how are you? Everything, Musa, man. Everything. Everything, but we're shocked at the same time. Yeah, it's very disturbing. Hey, Musa. Yeah, it's a very disturbing story. So, uh, just tell me your experience with the whole thing from the beginning. Um, especially as I was growing up, mm. I used to have a problem where whenever I was home at night, mm. I would get these nightmares, mm. you know, like they were not normal dreams, nightmares, yeah. like they were not normal dreams. It's not something that a normal person would have, yeah, right? So, in these dreams. My father would come to me and he would sleep with me, right? But it was so embarrassing at the time, like, mm. why would why would I be having sexual dreams about my father? Mm. So I would just keep quiet about it and, you know? Mm. And then I tried to stay away from home mm -hmm. as much as possible. Mm -hmm. I, I really avoided. Mm. I was that child that was always visiting somewhere. Yeah. So when I was eleven, um, my mother takes me to a doctor, mm. and me and my sister, mm. we get checked, and then 
from there on it's quiet you get home then at, at night you go to the car mm -hmm. and she tells me she's like the doctor tells me that you have been hurt right mm -hmm. I'm like, in what way? Like, I'm confused at this point. She says, um, has anybody been touching you in any way? And I'm like, no. Mm. No, 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 it can't be. Because... Now it's embarrassing. And besides that, I have no idea. I, I, I have never, ever, ever... Like, according to my knowledge, mm. I have never, ever been touched by anyone in any appropriate mm. way. So... I'm, I'm, I'm denying. It's just like, but you can't deny it happened because it, it happened. So now I'm being pressured into speaking who did this, and mm. I have no. You had idea. no clue at that time. No clue, nothing. Right. So and how is that? How is it that you didn't have a clue, but yet when you were three, you were able to talk about it. But now you are older and you don't have a clue. How how did that come about? Because. It has never happened to me consciously. Mm. It, it has never. So happened every time you 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 are dragged. Yes. Mm. Mm. So, so, like I deny it. I'm like mm. I don't know. Like everyone is like, no, you must know. It can't happen to you. Mm. And it was difficult. It was. Difficult. So even now you don't have a recollection of what happened. Nothing. All I have is like flashbacks of the dreams and mm. you know. It's very cringe, like it's sure, yeah. sure. So, in all this journey, mm -hmm. so right now, when obviously it was not conscious, mm -hmm. but your body must have responded in a certain way. Mm -hmm. My body, your body might have spoken to you, say, but I've been penetrated or something. I'm a yeah? yeah, but you see, I'm a child mm -hmm. and. I don't know what any of those things mean. feel like. Mm. I've it has never happened to me. Mm. Like you know, yeah. I, 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 there's nothing that I can just say. I know it happened, mm. so I know what it feels like. This different, so yeah, yeah. So, so when you okay, I don't know if you're sexually active or not right now. Mm -hmm. But do do you, do you have a boyfriend? No. You don't have a boyfriend. Have, have you been date? You have, have you dated before? Yes, I have. And so how has that been for you? That the journey of uh, you know dating and stuff. How's, how has that been for you? It has been very difficult. What makes it to be difficult? I have a problem with trusting and attaching myself to someone. Mm -hmm. You know, so it becomes a. I know you act like you don't love me. You don't like me, but. I, I feel like, personally, I feel like I do show interest in people, but clearly I don't. Like, I, I just... Based I, on their response, yeah, clearly you don't. I, I don't. Mm -hmm. So, I do know that I do not attach myself to someone fully. Mm -hmm. I always leave a big space for disappointment, mm -hmm. you know? Because... Yeah. I'm used to disappointment. I'm used that I'm used to not trusting people mm. because mm. they're not trustworthy. Mm. Now now tell me Gay yeah, this is this is so surprising, right? So so in all of this, mm -hmm. don't you think Hori maybe you need counseling? Have you been have you attended counseling or anything like that? I have, but mm -hmm. I haven't been attending counseling recently. Mm. But I just feel like right now I'm just learning myself, mm -hmm. you know. So as soon as I know what I like mm -hmm. and you know my personality, then after I know all of those things, then I can go ahead and proceed with learning how to accept people and trust people and. Because I still also have to trust myself as well. Mm. You know, I'm still learning to trust myself, my instincts as well, my boundaries as well. So, yeah, I'm just taking it slow. You're just taking it slow. Yeah, at my pace. Yeah, yeah. Has this affected you in any other area except for, you know, for relationship? Yeah, even 
friendly relationships as well. Mm. I also have a problem where I I just don't trust, you know? Mm. Like I'm yeah, I don't trust you. You don't trust. You know what I appreciate? Yeah. I think I appreciate the, the candidness and I appreciate the maturity that you have in being so self aware. Mm. Because I think a lot of people tend to find themselves in a bubble and find themselves in, in, in the cocoon of saying, I can't even speak. I don't even have a voice anymore. Mm. But you are so self aware in terms of what you feel you need to do before you get other intervention. Mm-hmm. And that that is what I approach you for. I mean, it's. it's, it's it's not anything that I think a mother would even dream would happen to her kids under her own watch. And having to sit here and listen to the maturity that comes out of her mouth, it just, just gets to show that not only in writing the book and writing the letter to her, but the journey that the two of you have taken together in this healing process. I applaud you for that. I think you've been a great mother in, in, in this whole in this whole yeah. journey. Thank yeah. you. You are very mature in how you, you are approaching it. Because a lot of people would run for therapy without even being aware in terms of and then I get to therapy and do what? Yeah. After the therapy, what do I want to achieve out of it? Mm. Before somebody else tells me what I need to achieve. Because mm. I, I have I have sometimes gone to therapy. I'm like, I really need therapy. Yeah. And then when I get into the session, I don't even know what I'm going exactly. to talk about. Exactly. I don't even know what to yeah. complain about. I don't yeah. even know what to say when I get there. Yeah. So, mm. yeah, it's just I need to know me, exactly. what bothers me. Yeah. Before I can go and tell somebody else, tell somebody else. else. Yeah. I love it. Well, I'll tell you what. For those ladies out there that have been through the same experience as yours, mm-hmm. and they, they've been struggling in terms of finding themselves, struggling in terms of how to deal with it, you've just helped them. Exactly. You've just helped them right exactly. now. And they, they, I, I, feel, I feel that they feel stronger. They feel that they can have a voice, like most of them who did not have a voice. Yeah. I mean, you're speaking now, and you can even smile about it. I mean... Uh, that's that's one of the yeah. ways that people get healed. Yeah. You know, and, and, and sometimes you heal by healing other people. True. You, you you gain strength when you go out there as much as you're an activist right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, the more you go out there and you talk about it and you see other people becoming better. Some of them come to you and confess. True. You know, maybe uh, you know uh, over you know overload whatever it is within their heart and they talk to you and they tell you this is what uh, also happened to me and 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 whether older or younger the more they do that, and this is my encouragement to you to say, go on and talk about it. Yeah, I mean, for me, you've been caught. Yeah. Let me just say that. Yeah. I, I feel I feel it's a calling for you. We, we go to, through troubles, True. many of us, and some of us, we die with our secrets. Yeah. But you decided to come out and talk about it, you understand? Yeah. And you can put a smile to it. Yeah. But, you, you know, I'm just saying, I'm just feeling that a lot of people have been helped today. Yeah. Those of you that are still going to watch this video, you are, I mean, they're going to be helped, mm, yeah. you know? But thank you so, so much, uh, you, you know, for sharing your heartbreaking story with us. And uh, good luck with your journey, you know, the journey of knowing yourself, of understanding yourself even better. Thank you, thank you so much, right? Thank you. All right, after the break, we're going on. Okay, my staff, the AK says, I know I'm to communicate. I'm not going to communicate. 